Origins of Atom Smasher Cyberpunk is an iconic game that has become a regular part of pop culture. The franchise has produced some iconic characters over the years. The main villain in the science fiction series is Atom Smasher. Told you, Johnny boy. Told you I'd end you someday. Smasher is a giant cyborg who has lost much of his humanity, if any he ever had. He is Morgan Blackhand's opponent in a full Bork solo. He works for Arasaka and, by 2077, has advanced to the post of Chief of Security and Yorinobu Arasaka's personal bodyguard. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video to learn more about the brooding cyborg that is Adam Smasher. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. How did Adam Smasher end up as a cyborg? New York is where Adam Smasher was born, and he got older, he took control of his own gang during the collapse, and clashed with the reparations. The army soon disbanded his group, but he was the lone survivor who enrolled in the military. After years of service, several of the sailors he learnt from were let go for disobedience. He then went back to his hometown and joined the mercenary force there. Smasher was prospering thanks to his attractive, brutish, cruel demeanor and a well-paying career that kept him stocked with guns, drugs, and women. However, a task came up that was above his capabilities. The business recruited Smasher and a number of other experts to carry out an operation to steal a prototype device from the opposition. Adam kept his identity a secret, even though it is now known that he was a representative of the Arasaka business. Smasher was, however, shot down by a rocket launcher one day. The remaining members of the team placed Adam's remains in a rucksack and then returned with him. Before being stabilized, Smasher flattened himself for eight minutes. Only through the interface could anybody speak with him, even if in the absence of his organism. It had been irreparably damaged by the explosion. His old employer, the Corp, claimed it was very unlucky for a mercenary. While Smasher was pondering assisted suicide because of his injuries, a higher up Arasaka took an interest in his abilities and made him an offer. For 15 years, he would be transformed into an 11 foot plus murdering machine that was solely interested in wreaking chaos and injuring other people. In the years that followed, Smasher not only mastered living as a complete cyborg, but also developed a devotion to them. As a soft, as he used to refer to non-Borgs today, he had done many things he could never even have imagined. Combating three black belts simultaneously while fighting with one hand undone, using sports bikes as combat weapons, surviving a grenade blast from less than half a meter away, and falling from the eighth story into a garbage truck or just a few examples. All that we know about Adam Smasher. When his group was wiped out, Adam Smasher, a typical hooligan and worthless scoundrel from New York, enlisted in the military. Before being discharged for poor behavior, he spent a lot of years serving in the military. Then he began working as a hired gun boy in his hometown. Due to his lack of morals and sadistic thoroughness, Adam was able to earn enough money to maintain his addiction to drugs, equipment, weapons, and violent one-night stands. As a result, he led a comfortable life, but when everything went wrong, he finally accepted the position. Several rockets hit him, turning him into a meatloaf. His buddies traveled from outside the zone on a rucksack to the Big Apple with what was left of him. In response to his observation, a mysterious corporate benefactor made him the classic offer he couldn't refuse, corporate slavery in a metal body, the alternative being death as though thoughts of the extinction of humanity would torment Adam. Since then, seven years have passed, and the new robotic Adam Smasher has established quite a reputation around the East Coast. He would hire it out when given an assignment as long as it wasn't an evident suicide or betrayal. He did have one requirement. There must be collateral damage and human casualties. Along the way, he had grown to have a subtle feud with Morgan Blackhand, because he saw the original Solo as a challenge to his belief that metal is superior to meat. Adam had made several attempts to challenge Morgan to a duel, but Morgan had always chosen to ignore him. Obviously, this rejection had just fueled the cyborg's sadistic wrath. His covert sponsors had given him time to freelance in the meanwhile. Since the war, things have changed and Adam is now hired mainly by his clients, a division of Arasaka Security. He was okay with everything, especially since he was aware that Morgan was presently employed at Militech. Arasaka enlisted Adam Smasher in the fourth corporate war in 2022. Adam knew Militech had hired Morgan Blackhand, therefore, he was more than willing to battle for Arasaka. Adam received everything he could possibly need from Arasaka, including the Dai Oni power armor conversion gear that 
that made him into a practically impregnable machine. Smasher was there on August 23rd, the day before the Night City Holocaust at the summit of Arasaka Tower. That evening, Smasher and the rest of the Arasaka warriors assaulted Johnny Silverhand and Morgan Blackhand's unit, according to a former Spec Ops agent who was on the assignment. Silverhand, who Smasher wounded as a result of distracting him by yelling and firing at him with his gun, gave Shaitan the chance to restrain Smasher. Despite this, Johnny was gravely hurt by Adam, who had to be rescued by the Arasaka medical staff. Later, when the rest of the extraction team departed on their aerodyne, Smasher arrived at the top of the tower and began to prepare to battle Blackhand. Before the nuclear bomb exploded, Blackhand joked about trying Smasher's philosophy for itself. Smasher survived the bomb and was found by Arasaka, who treated him by replacing what little of the man was left with further machinery. Because Smasher was one of the few persons who knew where Johnny was buried, it is believed that Saburo Arasaka assigned him with the responsibility of caring for Silverhand's remains in his belongings. Soon after, Adam vanished for a long time. Over the years, Smasher would frequently visit Night City. For a while, he collaborated with Rogue Amendieris. Smasher reportedly discovered more of Silverhand's belongings in Samantha Stevens' garage and other locations around 2045. He made the decision to keep some of Silverhand's possessions, including his Porsche and the Malorian Arms 3516, despite having sold most of them. Adam was hired as Yorinobu Arasaka's bodyguard and given responsibility of overseeing Arasaka's dirty tasks. Adam quickly developed developed a reputation for being a master at tying up loose ends. He established his headquarters at Watson's Ebunite Docks during this period. One of his most dependable men, Jeremiah Grayson, became his right hand and as a reward for a job well done, Smasher gave him Silverhand's special gun. Smasher was employed in 2076 by Arasaka operatives Kate and Douglas to cope with the mercenary David Martinez, who was wielding an experimental Arasaka cyber skeleton and was on the rampage. Smasher emerged from Arasaka Tower to save Douglas's life and engaged David when David arrived there. Smasher and David would exchange a few insults before David became preoccupied with the trauma team removing Faraday, whom he had just rendered unconscious. David would briefly become Cyber Psycho and activate his Sandivistin as a result of Smasher shooting him in the gut. Smasher retaliated, used the same speedware, and launched a missile that struck the rear of David's exoskeleton, directly hitting it with plenty of force to expel David, Lucy, and Faraday out of Arasaka Tower. At the same time, they were still attached to Trauma Team Stretcher. Faraday wouldn't make it through the fall. Lucy and David managed to flee for a brief period, but Smasher caught up with them and crushed Rebecca. Falco made an effort to impede Smasher, but was simply repelled. In danger of entering cyberpsychosis, David turned to his Sandivistin, but was startled to discover Smasher using one as well, mocking it as a rudimentary implant. Additionally, Lucy tries to quick hack Smasher, but it only serves to anger him before her cyber deck goes wrong for a brief period of time. In an attempt to stop Falco and Lucy from escaping, David performs a gravity crush on Smasher. In response, Smasher rips the anti-gravity equipment from the exoskeleton. Smasher continues to bash David while he is still wearing his crippled exoskeleton, which is eventually torn apart from his body. Smasher, who is standing over David, remarks that he had some fun after all, and that David might develop into an interesting construct. Smasher regrets David's decision, and uses a projectile launch system at close range to kill him after he declines. Adam continued to serve as Yorinobu's bodyguard in 2077. He frequently followed Yorinobu to the Kunpeki Plaza penthouse, startling visitors like Evelyn Parker when she was there. A few weeks later, Yorinobu's father, Saburo, showed out to have a conversation with him. At the same time, the mercenaries V and Jackie West Wells carried out a heist of the relic in the penthouse. Smasher was with Yorinobu at the time. Just before Yorinobu broke and strangled his father, Smasher and Saburo's bodyguard Goro Takamura left. V and Jackie, the witnesses, managed to get away from Smasher despite his best efforts to stop them. Yorinobu took over as CEO of Arasaka after Saburo's passing, elevating Smasher to the head of security. Sandayu Oda forewarned Smasher that the march would be sabotaged in an effort to hurt Yorinobu's sister, Hanako Arasaka. During the morning parade, for Saburo. Oda continued to question Smasher's activities, but Smasher dismissed his concerns and accused Oda of defying Yorinobu. In the end, it turned out that Oda was right. With V's assistance, Takamura was able to enter Hanako's float and abduct her. After that, Smasher was in charge of an Arasaka strike team and personally freed Hanako while also giving the order to execute her kidnappers. After this, the eventual fate of Adam Smasher. Adam Smasher is subjected to four possible fates depending upon the choices made by V. In the first scenario, if V requests aid from Pan Am, Adam travels to the Mikoshi entry point to murder the invaders after learning that they had entered Arasaka Tower through the underground. Pan Am Palmer, Saul Bright, and V were among the Aldecaldo's members he discovered. Saul shot Adam in the chest after destroying the fence, since Adam had wounded him just before killing him. 
When Adam demanded to know where Rogue was and shouted that he would locate her after dealing with Al Caldos, a fight broke out between the three of them. Adam, however, lost the conflict. In the second scenario, after an unidentified flying object attacks Arasunka Tower, Adam and the rest of the security are on high alert. In case V lets Johnny and Rogue go, he surmised that the Queen of Fixers and his adversary Rogue Amandieris were likely responsible. When Adam arrived at the Makoshi Axis Point, he learned that Rogue, Crispin Wayland, and V were accountable for the attack. Rogue confronted him, she threw a grenade into his chest, injuring him before he could kill her. Then he started to battle Crispin and V combat ended with Adam losing. In the third scenario, if Hanako was called for assistance by V, then Hanako's group progressively grabbed control of Arasaka Tower, with Goro Takamura and V directing the men to the CEO's office during Yorinobu's military takeover of Arasaka. In a desperate attempt to save Yorinobu, Adam stopped them just as they were about to enter the CEO's office. Adam exclaimed that he would locate Rogue after dealing with V and Takamura as he questioned where she was and engaged them in combat. Nevertheless, Adam lost the conflict. And in the last scenario, if V and Johnny attempted a suicide run alone, Adam Smasher would stop them before they reached the Mikoshi Axis Point. He demanded to know where Rogue was and shouted that he would locate her after dealing with V, which sparked a brawl between the two. Adam either lost the fight or succeeded in murdering V, while also indirectly killing Johnny, his arch-rival. The problem with killing Adam Smasher in the prologue of the game. When Cyberpunk 2077 was first released, it was an instant success, selling millions of copies worldwide. But the game did have its fair share of bugs and glitches. That may seem like a strange contrast, but that is just how Cyberpunk 2077 has evolved from what it was intended to be and what it has become. The game was ultimately launched in December of 2020, after being initially scheduled for release in April. Anticipant players promptly panned the product for its variety of flaws. Because of the game's instability, Sony even removed it from the PlayStation Store into the middle of 2021. However, many of these problems have been resolved since then. However, one issue players ran into in the game was that after meeting Adam Smasher in the prologue, players had to complete the task of the heist, which saw V and Jackie sneaking into Konpeki Plaza and robbing Yorinobu Arasaka of an experimental biochip. The two, however, see Yorinobu murder his father in front of Adam Adam Smasher, who then makes an effort to track them down and kill them. Then, as they move across the corridor, they come face to face with Adam Smasher. Adam won't launch an attack initially, maybe because the player isn't supposed to be at this location at all. The blueprint for the Ba Ching Chong shotgun is available in a catch that the player may access after looting Adam Smasher's corpse. The player may obtain a catch from Adam Smasher's body that contains the Ba Jing Shang shotgun's design blueprint. Only at the conclusion of Cyberpunk 2077 is this fabled weapon accessible. Then everything goes according to plan. But obviously, without the horrifying huge cyborg man that is pursuing you down like a predator. Although it's not a satisfactory conclusion, it's an intriguing investigation of what may have happened if V had the guts of a certain rocker boy. Don't make me laugh! Adam Smasher's cameo in the Netflix animation series. David sets out with a group to finish Faraday's task of halting an Arasakan convoy on the highway. Jimmy is with Lucy, who has been stolen. It turns out that David was lured into this convoy by a trap. Militech encircles the gathering with a barrage of weapons. David receives a call from Lucy encouraging him to go inside the cyberskeleton, forcing him to do so. Of course, Faraday is using this as a ruse. When Lucy finally manages to escape her kidnapper, she calls David quickly to warn him to leave, since he's walked straight into to a trap, but it's too late, he merges with a cyber skeleton. Rebecca and Falco witness David destroying Militech, but in the process becomes Cyber Psycho. After rallying the warriors and deciding to rescue Lucy and stop Faraday, David manages to maintain control of the technology for a while. While all this is happening, Faraday betrays Kiwi and kills her to attempt to hide his tracks. With her last breath, she calls Falco and begs him to rally the troops and bring Lucy home. The surviving armed guards assault Becca, David, and Falco as they drive into Night City, with the basilisk dead and the convoy destroyed. Faraday and Kiwi are concerned that David will come after them when they reach the city, since he is drifting in and out of cyberpsychosis. David gets images of his mother, who exhorts him to keep fighting since his medications are no longer working, and he is drifting in and out of sanity. The medication isn't helping, and Becca recognizes it when she can't communicate with him anymore. Getting him to Lucy is the only option. Even though there is just one vial left before he loses control, David is ready for the decisive battle. Faraday tries negotiating with Douglas, but David enters the scene and radically flips the situation. He wipes out every guard and knocks Faraday into a pool of blood. Arasaka, however, has a cunning plan. David is mortally wounded by Smasher when they bring him out. 
After all of this commotion, David is able to grab Lucy and whisk her away. When he loses control, Lucy leans in and kisses him, pulling him back. David, aware that he will die, has accepted his fate. He nonetheless exhorts Lucy to live and carry on. The camera swings over to Falco and Becca while Faraday is being demolished to see them being detained by the cops. Sadly, Smasher makes a comeback and destroys Rebecca this time, turning her into a bloody mess. He takes pictures of Falco before turning his camera to David. When there are no longer any suppressants, David gives Falco and Lucy some time to go before choosing how to split the prize money. Smasher kills David in his final act, suggesting that David and Lucy might not be going to the moon together. As the episode closes, Lucy leaves on her own for her journey to the moon, which she naturally shared with David back in this season's early episodes. What makes Adam Smasher so powerful? Adam Smasher is an extremely powerful being owing to his extensive cybernetic modification which allows him to perform a plethora of maneuvers and combat scenarios. Adam, who had previously worn a novel tech Samson that gave him a slightly more human appearance, had transformed into a large bulking monstrosity after becoming a full Borg. He now usually wears a heavy modified IEC Dragoon that resembles a humanoid tank with big shoulders, a thin waist, and a looming stature. Numerous weaponries, including a missile launcher, a retractable arm cannon, and a Militech Mark 31 HMG affixed to his shoulder are discovered connected to his body. Except for his top head, which somewhat resembled a bald man's, and his red eye optical mod replaced eyes, there was little evidence that he was human. While dating Michiko Arasaka, Adam wore an RMC Gemini system that allowed him to effortlessly disguise his true identity as a complete Borg by changing his form to that of any human. Marvelous Verdict It is simple to say that Adam Smasher lacked any semblance of humanity. He hates people he perceives as weak and thinks only the strong will survive. He joined the military only for the purpose of murdering as many people as he could and he took tremendous pleasure in doing it. He started working as a mercenary for hire, doing tasks which directly entailed killing people after being discharged from the military for terrible behavior, which is a lot given the standards at the time. Additionally, he had an obsession with various forms of high-tech armor and weapons, always looking for the finest ones to utilize to cause significant harm. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone!